What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use AWS Secrets Manager to safely store and retrieve your sensitive information such as passwords, API keys, or, or any other information that you may not be comfortable storing it in, the, in your application code. I found that Secrets Manager is very helpful in the real world because for every application you have to access a database and you need to use your username and password for that. And obviously it's not safe to expose those information in your application code. So this is when Secrets Manager comes in handy because it allows you to store those sensitive information in the vault and you can configure that to only allow selective applications to access those information. So that way you can ensure that no one can access your secrets from your application code. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna use AWS Lambda written in Python to access the secrets but the idea is the same for all other applications. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I'm on the homepage of the AWS console. So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is that we're gonna store two API keys in our secrets manager. One is for dev and then the other one is for prod. And then we're gonna use AWS Lambda to access both of the uh, API keys. So step one is to store those secrets into our secrets manager. So I'm gonna type in Secrets Manager, and then create a new secret. Um, so in here, you have the option to choose what type of secret it is. You can use it for uh, database, obviously for usernames and passwords and stuff. And for us, for this tutorial, we're just gonna use it for plain text, like API keys. Uh, so I'm gonna select this one. So for the key value, uh, the key is gonna be API key value let me do the def one first. So let's just do, and obviously you can use it to store more than just one row or one key value pair. You can add more key value pairs for it. Um, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna have a API key. And then next, and in here, we're gonna specify the path or secret name, like how we're gonna access this secret. Um, give it a name, I'm just gonna call it Junemeister slash dev key, something like that. Uh, description, this is for dev. Hit next. Um, you can enable the auto rotation, um, but for simplicity, I'm just gonna skip that. Hit next. Store. It's done. And now you should be able to see one secret we have here for dev and right now we're going to create another one for prod so we're going to repeat the same process uh, api key my test prod api key 456 because we had one two three before hit next so we're going to follow the same structure gene minister prod key for prod, hit next, hit next, hit store. Okay, so now we have two keys. One is for dev and then the other one is for prod and they're different. And now the next step is to create a Lambda function and access these keys. Um, but before we can do that, we need to create an IAM row for our Lambda function to use. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to access those keys. Remember, we have to explicitly allow them to access our keys. And that's what makes it safe. So I'm going to go to IAM. So before we can create a row, we're going to create a policy first. Create policy. Service. We're going to select secrets manager and then we only allowed the lambda function to read from it um, because we only allow them to do the things that they need to do and then we're going to specify resources and we're going to add the two arms so let's go back here the first one we're going to add is the dev secret arm hit add and then we're going to add the second one as well, the prod one. Okay, 
So this way, in this policy, we say that we only allowed the read access to these two secrets only. It's not going to be able to write anything to it, and it's not able to read anything other than these two secrets. So if I add a third one to my man secrets manager, um, the lender function is not going to be able to read them because they don't have a reason to read them, and that's what we want to restrict the access to. Okay, so hit next, read view, and then give it a name. I'll just call it secrets manager demo policy. Hit create. Okay, and now we are ready to create a row and then attach the policy. So hit rows, create a row, AWS service. We're going to choose Lambda because the Lambda function is going to use it. And then we're going to search for that secret manager demo policy. I think that's what we call it. Hmm. Secrets manager, maybe? Yes, secrets manager. So that's the one that we just created earlier. I had a typo before. So now selected it. Hit next. Give the row name. Uh, secrets manager demo row. Hit create okay so that is done uh, let me search it to make sure that it's there yep it's there and now we're ready to move on to the next step which is to create a lambda function and access it uh, so i'm gonna type in lambda and then hit create function uh, from scratch for the name i'm just gonna call it something like that and then we're going to use python 3.9 and then permission we're going to use the iam row that we just created which is that and then create a function okay so that is done right now and let's write out the codes to access our api keys from the secrets manager so first thing first we're going to do some imports the first one is bodo3 the second one is base64 and then the third one we're going to do is uh, the client error and we're going to import that from the Bodo core and now we are going to remove everything the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a environment variable and we're taking that from our event object so that's going to be passed in by us and for the attribute we're just gonna let's just call it inf and depending on what the environment is we are going to define our secret name and let me see and that should be something like this secret name except this one is going to be flexible or parameterized so basically what it does is replace that with whatever the environment is if it's dev, it's going to set it to dev. If it's prod, it's going to set it to prod. And then the region, um, the region of where we store our secrets, and I believe is US East. So we're going to do US East. I mean, US East one. And then we're going to create a new session. So we're going to do session Bodo 3. And then next, we're going to we're going to define a client that we can use to get the secrets from the secret manager. So the service name is secrets manager, all lowercase, region name, just the region name that we define here. And then next, we can use the client to retrieve the secrets from the secrets manager. And we're going to do that in a try catch block just in case that we have errors or issues in the execution secret value response secret id is equal to the secret name that we defined and then if there is a client exception um, for me, I'm just going to print it out, uh, but you should handle that according to your application. And then otherwise, if there's no exception, 
we're going to deal with it, the response. Um, so there can be two types of response from the secret manager. One is just string, straightforward, um, but then it can also be binary that we need to decode it. Uh, so let's handle the string version of it first. So if secret string is in the uh, secret value response, we're just, just gonna do a JSON load on the secret response. So our secret is json.loads because it comes in as a string and we want it to be in a JSON format. Secret string. And then let's just simply return that uh, to the client, whoever is calling it. Otherwise, it's a binary uh, data. And in that case, we need, we need to decode that uh, using the base64 library. So we're going to do decoded binary secret. And now you can do whatever you um, want to do with the decoded secret. And for me, I'm just going to return it to the client, but you can do whatever you want uh, depending on your application. Okay, so that is done. So now let's test it out. Uh, let's save it first. Deploy, and then hit test. Create a test event. And in here, we have to define our inf variable. Uh, let's do dev first. Because remember, it takes in the inf uh, parameter from the event object. So hit test. OK, so that seems to be working. Uh, so it's getting our API key. That is my test dev API key, one, two, three. And now let's test out the functionality to get the production API key. So change that to prod, hit save, hit test again. That should become my test prod API key, four, five, six, or something like that. And yep, there you go. We're getting the prod API key from here. And this is it everyone, uh, this is a pretty short tutorial, I hope you've learned something and if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.